Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about the accounting equation and of course I'm your instructor Brandy. Now the accounting equation itself is actually pretty simple. The equation is simply assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. So the question you may be asking yourself now is what is an asset or what is a liability or what's owner's equity? Let's go into each of these individually and talk about them. So first let's talk about assets. The definition of an asset is a resource that's controlled by the company that's expected to benefit the business in the future. Assets have to give the company a future benefit. And this is really important to remember because it's going to help us later on distinguish the difference between an asset and an expense to a company. So what are some accounts that are types of assets? Let's just take a few examples and say how they benefit the company in the future. The first, most obvious asset is cash. So now think to yourself, how will cash benefit the company in the future? Well, of course, we can spend it. We can spend it to maintain operations or buy a building. The next is accounts receivable. And accounts receivable is amounts that people owe you for work you've done for them. So how would we use this for a future benefit? Well, hopefully your customers are eventually going to pay you what they owe you for accounts receivable. So you'll turn those into cash, which then you can spend. Another type of asset is inventory. So how does that have a future benefit to the company? Well, of course, we can sell inventory to our customers in order to gain cash to then buy things. So as you can see, these things are all coming back to generating cash. The last big category of assets would be property, plant and equipment or fixed assets. And as you can imagine, if you own a building or a piece of equipment, you can use that to run your operations and generate cash. So now let's talk about what liabilities are. As I'm sure you can imagine, liabilities are debts that are payable to outsiders of the companies, or sometimes we call them creditors. Now let's talk about a few examples of liabilities. The first example and the most common on a company's financial statements is accounts payable. And accounts payable comes around when you buy something from another company and you tell them, I'll pay you later. Obviously you owe that company some money or that person some money and that is called an accounts payable. We can also have other types of payables such as salaries or wages payable and that's when you owe your employees for work that they have done for you but you haven't yet paid them. Another really common type of liability would be a loan. Let's say from a bank or a mortgage on the building that the company is buying. Now let's talk about a term you may not have heard before, owner's equity. Owner's equity is probably the most confusing part of the accounting equation. Defined, owner's equity is the amount of the company's assets that remains after the liabilities are subtracted. Sometimes we call owner's equity net assets. Now owner's equity is made up of quite a few different things. So let's go through each of them. Items that increase the owner's equity in the company and investments can occur either in cash or in another type of assets. So for example, if an owner decides to start their business and put in $5,000 worth of cash and they also put in a computer, say worth $2,000 into the business to help run the company, those would both be investments in the business that would increase your owner's equity. The other item that increases owner's equity is revenues. Revenues come about when you sell a product. So let's pretend our company makes pens and we're going to sell our pen for $2. The cost to make that pen is 50 cents. So now what is the revenue in this situation? The revenue in this situation is the sales price of $2. And that's when you're manufacturing a product or buying and selling a product. Revenues can also be when you're running a service organization. So for example, an accountant. An accountant usually bills their time by the hour. So let's pretend we're a successful accounting firm and we bill out our clients at $250 per hour. That $250 per hour would be considered revenue for the accounting company. So now that we know what increases owner's equity, let's talk about what decreases it. As you remember, investments in the company increased owner's equity. So logically, 
Withdrawals from the company decrease owner's equity. So this is when the owner takes money out of the company. The other item that decreases owner's equity are expenses. Now remember our pen example when we were selling our pen for $2 and the cost of the pen was 50 cents. We said that that $2 was revenue, but now this 50 cents is our expense. So expenses are amounts that have been paid or will be paid for costs that have been incurred to earn revenue. Some examples of expenses other than the cost of manufacturing or the cost of the product that you're selling are rent on either your office building or your factory, salaries or wages that you pay to employees, utilities such as keeping your electricity on, and amortization, but we'll talk about that later. So overall, owner's equity is increased by investments by the owner in the company. It's also increased by revenues. And owner's equity is decreased by withdrawals and by expenses. So now let's go back to our accounting equation that we looked at originally. We said that the accounting equation is assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. This means what the company has, so the assets, what they control and have a future benefit, is equal to things that are owed to outsiders, their debt or liabilities, plus, plus the amount that is left over for the owner. This accounting equation must always, always, always work. And you're gonna see why a bit later in the course. So every single time you have a transaction within your company, you have to make sure that your assets always equal your liabilities plus your owner's equity. Okay, so now let's discuss a couple of examples just to see how we can make this equation always work. The first example we have is that Brandy, me, I invest $50,000 in my new company. To make this accounting equation work, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity, you can see intuitively that there needs to be more than one thing happening in this transaction. At least two accounts are going to be affected. So we always think about transactions from a company's point of view. So when Brandy invests $50,000 into the company, that means the company gets cash of $50,000. So cash goes up by $50,000 and of course cash is an asset. We also said when we were talking about owner's equity that investments into the company increase owner's equity. So our owner's equity, my capital in the company, increases by $50,000. So here, let's just do a quick check. Does our accounting equation work? Our assets have gone up by $50,000 and our capital has gone up by $50,000. This means our accounting equation is balanced and we're happy. We can move on to our next transaction. Every single time you do a transaction, that is the process you should go through. So now let's talk about a second example. Company purchases land for $20,000. Now let's identify what's happening in this transaction. The company is getting land, which we can say land has a future benefit to our company because either we can sell it later on or we can use the land to run our business. Because it has that future benefit to us, land is considered an asset. So assets increase for $20,000. The other part of this transaction is that we're paying cash for the land. Cash, as we talked about before, is also an asset. Our assets decrease with cash of $20,000. Now let's do a quick check and see if our assets equal our liabilities plus our owner's equity. Or let's see if our accounting equation works. Our assets have gone up by 20,000, but also down by 20,000. This means that there is no effect on assets. Liabilities have not changed and owner's equity have not changed. Our accounting equation works. There's no effect on either side of the accounting equation. There is no effect on either side of the accounting equation. So now that we've finished this lesson, I'm hoping that you can define the accounting equation identify assets, liabilities, and owner's equity, and the types of accounts that go into each, and to analyze transactions with the help of the accounting equation. That sums up our lesson on the accounting equation. 
I hope you've enjoyed watching.